the following presentation of the Daily Mass is made possible by your generous donations to Catholic Television of San Antonio. The Archdiocese of San Antonio and CTSA invite you to join us in celebrating these sacred mysteries, listening to God's word and partaking of spiritual communion. Welcome to the Daily Mass. We are gathered today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. It is September 10th. It does not feel like there's been enough time gone by to get to this point, but it is that date. Our, it's hard to believe. I mean, school just started, and we're already at our stewardship fair for our parish, and people like ask me questions like, are you sure that's this weekend? And I'm like, huh, okay, we're staying a little long here. And tomorrow, obviously, the anniversary of September 11th, and just that horrific event. I have relatives in New York. I have my sister's brother-in-law that saw the second tower come down. So for all those people that are still feeling the impact and the loss from, from September 11th, and for peace, I really think in our world, you know, we pray for all these things, but we pray for the people that hurt us. We pray that they might find God. We pray for those that don't know the God that we know and we pray that through us bringing God more completely into this world, not bringing it, but helping people understand his presence more completely in this world, that we may truly work to bring peace. So as we begin this celebration, so that we can be open to that peace ourselves, let us ask forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede on our behalf. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to show each of us the path to life eternal. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, through your cross, you have shattered the chains of sin and death. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, and that daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. My beloved ones, avoid idolatry. I am speaking as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I am saying. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. Look at Israel according to the flesh. Are not those who eat the sacrifices participants in the altar? So what am I saying? That meat sacrificed to idols is anything? Or that an idol is anything? No. I mean that what they sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons, not to God. 
and I do not want you to become participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and also the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and of the table of demons. Or are we provoking the Lord to jealous anger? Are we stronger than he is? The word of the Lord. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. me will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him alleluia 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 the lord be with you a reading from the holy gospel according to luke jesus said to his disciples a good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For people do not pick figs from thorn bushes, nor do they gather grapes from brambles. A good person out of the a good person out of the store of goodness in their heart produces good, but an evil person out of the store of evil produces evil. For from the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, but do not do what I command? I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, listens to, listens to my words, and acts on them. The one is like a man building a house, who dug deeply and laid the foundation on rock. When the flood came, the river burst against that house, but could not shake it, because it had been well built. But the one who listens and does not act is like a person who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against it, it collapsed at once and was completely destroyed. The Gospel of the Lord. It's been a long time since we've been doing anything together, huh, Charles? Yes. If you did not see the appeal video, since they're doing another push for that, Charles is the star. So watch it, and we're there, the two of us. It's very serious. That's everything Charles and I do, very serious. So go find it. It's on the development website, I am sure, and watch the video. It's cool. We look at the readings today, and to say we're challenged might be a little bit of an understatement. Because God is saying that what we produce comes from who and what we are. And that good things come from good people. And when you look at your life, and in like sometimes we have those weeks where we think it's chaos everywhere, you have to think, what part of this chaos is me? Because it's so easy to look around and go, oh, there's the cause, there's the cause, there's the cause. And as long as we can avoid a mirror for the entire day, we feel pretty good at the end of the day. But then at that point, we realized, wait a minute, maybe I have a part of this. Maybe I'm the reason that this isn't going the way it needs to be going. Because none of us are perfect. As good as we try to be, there's that sin thing that keeps creeping in. 
and we keep getting taken off in the, right, in the wrong path. The reference to idols in that first reading, that whole idea that we can start putting things in all the wrong perspectives. And, you know, I, was, I sent an email a couple of weeks ago to a parent who was saying, well, we just moved and we can't get to Mass. And so I didn't chastise the parent. I said, we're trying to form the children to understand what their priorities need to be in their life. And, you know, the worst thing you can say to a priest, just FYI, you can tell your children, your grandchildren, whatever, is, oh, we wanted to go to church, but we just, we had soccer, and we had baseball, we had football. And it's like, oh, and he died on the cross, and we can't give up just one hour to pray with our community. And I realized how far off we've gotten, because my parents, one, we never miss church, but two, even if we were late, I mean, wouldn't have ever wanted to admit it or get caught at that. I remember once we were running late, we went to a different church so it wouldn't be known that we were late. And it's like, we, we get so far off in our current world. There's so many other things that seem to be important, but it's about the reality that God died for us. And you go through, and God calls us to this place. God doesn't say, hey, if you get a chance, can you stop by church? Chapter 6 of John, and I hate this. I teach homiletics to the deacons. I tell them not to do this. So to all the deacons, you have one on me if you're watching this because this is what I tell you not to do. Jesus says, unless you eat and drink, you will not know eternal life. That's my summary of it. John says a little bit better. Unless you eat and drink of the bread of life, and the, unless you eat my bread and drink my blood, you will not have life eternal. And I think when we come to this place and we look at those negative things in our life, those things that we're trying to conquer, we have to come here. We've got to come to this table and allow God to work within us. Because that idea of sacrifice, it's come up a few times in the prayers today, that idea of sacrifice, the psalm, that idea of sacrifice. And I always think, well, we're referring, for a long time in my life, I thought, we're referencing back to the sacrifices of old. And I was already ordained a priest. I'm not going to admit how long it was. When I said, pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice, and I thought, I'm not really sacrificing much here. And then it dawned on me, wait a minute. That sacrifice is our life. And we don't like thinking about that in our culture. We don't like thinking that we have to give anything up. We want it all. And that one comedian that says, you can't have it all. Where would you put it? Sana puts it in comparison. We do have it all. We have eternal life with God. I don't know what more we could ask for. But it seems like all those things sort of get in the way. New cars, new houses, new this, new that, new whatever. And we forget that we're called to this table to sacrifice, to give of ourselves. And we ask God to transform us by the very act that we come here. We're asking God to transform us. And that, I think if people understood, would be a legitimate reason to be cautious coming here. But we come and when we place our lives on this table, we're saying, God, mold us, change us. But we don't say into what? That's why we have the Lord's Prayer where it is, because we pray, your will be done. Because when we say amen, it doesn't mean I believe. Where that came from, I have no idea. If somebody knows, let me know, because I have no idea. Because it means so be it. We're assenting to God's will, that we're asking to be changed, we're asking to be made holy, and then we say amen. Not to do it in our terms, but we want to be transformed in God's terms. And we take what we placed on the altar, and we receive it back into ourselves, and we are changed. And you know, we think that's a nice ethereal concept, but I know things in my life I have fixed by placing them on the altar and giving them to God. It didn't always work the way I thought it would, but it's always worked that God has come and healed whatever that, that was needed healing, changed what needed changing. I know people that have overcome addiction who have failed at 10-step um, processes and have come in addition to their 10-step process and placed their addiction in the bread and the wine. And one guy within a month he said he was better. He called me after his first year. He said, this is my first sober year that I can remember. And it was combining the Eucharist with my 10-step program. We have a power here beyond our imagination. And, well, soccer is more important. I don't get it. But I'm probably, that's why I'm not a soccer mom. Well, there are other reasons I'm not a soccer mom. But we have to start getting the word out. This should not be the well-kept secret. This should not be something that is just... You know, for those of good faith, our world needs this. And I think our challenge, and boy, did I get on a soapbox today. Well, it's our stewardship fair, so I guess I better get ready for it because I have a whole weekend of this. But 
we really need to get this message out because our world needs us. We need that transformative action, all of us, so that we can have that pure heart that our world needs to help other people know that majesty and that glory of our God. Together with one voice, we bring our prayers and petitions to the Lord. For the church throughout the world, may God plant the seed of his word in the hearts of believers and help them to bear good fruit. Let us pray to the Lord. For judges and others in positions of judicial authority, may the Holy Spirit guide them in wisdom as they balance forgiveness, mercy, and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are ill and struggling with their pain, may God's grace bring them relief and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For this faith community, may God continue to guide us in responding to his call of discipleship and holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those in this community of faith discerning a vocation to the priesthood or religious life, May God's grace and peace be with them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they rejoice in perfect communion with the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who were impacted by September 11th, for those who are still living with the pain and the hurt from that day, and for peace for our world. Let us pray for the. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Almighty God, you invite us to be united to your very self. Help us as we pray to overcome the divisions that separate us, and help lead us all to your table, to your altar, to your peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you. Food of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to the gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost by disobedience. And so with angels and saints we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when Sir Poisoned, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gustavo, our Bishop, Mike and Gary's auxiliaries, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now can dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Now let's offer to one another a sign of peace and pray for peace for our world. Peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord have 
not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe all that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already here, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Again, thanks to our sponsors, to all that make this possible. And remember, I mentioned the appeal. Go check out that video. It was a lot of fun doing, and people told me they really enjoyed it. So go check it out. Charles and Pat, the Lord be with you. Remember, God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, proclaiming the good news with your lives. help this very important ministry to continue by sending a donation to Catholic Television of San Antonio, 2718 West Woodlawn, San Antonio, Texas, 78228, or contribute online at ctsa.tv.